Hey everyone, Scott Cunningham, aka Scotsy Business. Today we're going to be talking about decentralization, centralization, and how they affect and apply to social media platforms, whether they're legacy or blockchain related. So let's dive right in. The whole purpose of this video is to explain and break down why this is important, especially for people in uh, the blockchain crypto space or people who just, you know, care about uh, privacy, free speech, a lot of these uh, more libertarian values, right? So when we look at something like Twitter, this is very centralized as a social media platform. And then we have something like library, which is very decentralized, at least for their, uh, their downloaded application. The reason that this is important, and I guess we'll first break down centralized and decentralized and what that even means. So centralized means that any kind of entity or, you know, whatever happens to be a network or, you know, some sort of thing that is being used by many people is central to a specific entity or authority. So again, an example would be on Twitter, there are moderators, administrators, people with higher privileges who monitor things and they could ban you if so need be it. It means that a very small amount of people are making the decisions for the majority because it's centralized. The authority, the power, the control has been centralized to a central entity. So for example, uh, my brand is centralized to me. It is not decentralized because only I have control over my brand, Scott C business, and that's fine. But when you're talking about something that is used by everyone, and it's being controlled by a small amount of people, that's when you start to get in concerns and have issues and problems uh, with privacy, free speech, manipulation, politics, everything, right? So not that long ago, Twitter was hacked. And because it is centralized, well, I mean, it was barely hacked, right? I've covered this. It was just that someone was tricked who had administrative privileges, allowing the hacker to gain access to many, many high profile accounts. That's only possible on a centralized platform because on a decentralized platform, there isn't a central authority that can just log into your account and change the password. The difference is that in a decentralized, um, you know, network like library, for example, or hive or steam, not really steam anymore, but on these networks, you couldn't just be banned, nor could someone even, you know, hack in, into your uh, account and get your information from some sort of central database by, you know, tricking someone. The only way that they're getting your password is from you doing something wrong. So you also can't reset your password if you forget it. So there is more responsibility on you. So, so that I'm not just bashing centralization, there are some pros and some cons to both in a centralized um, network you can make many decisions very quickly and efficiently uh, execute those decisions the bad thing is that it's a small amount of people making the decisions on behalf of everyone in that network so they could be biased they could have certain political views they could not represent uh, what most people actually want and, you know, that can be a problem, but then, you know, they can also help you recover your password. If you forget it, they can provide you many more services and features very efficiently um, that you couldn't easily get in a decentralized manner because also um, centralized platforms have access to all the previous centralized platforms that have been built before them. The concept of decentralization um, in general is very, very new because the internet is new. So originally we were just doing everything in a centralized way. Even the internet itself is centralized to many uh, servers that are run by only a few people or rather companies or entities. So for example, I'm not sure what the actual stat is, but off the top of my head, I believe it's something like 80% of internet traffic goes through a Google, an Amazon, a Facebook, or a Twitter server at some point. So 
say they manage to completely cut you out of the centralized version of the internet. Only four companies would have to make sure that this is the case and uh, they can get you out of the majority of internet traffic and your own, then you only have access to 20% of the internet. In a decentralized network like blockchain, you have peer to peer connections. So you're relying that everyone is working in, in a good way. It's not as efficient. It's going to take a lot longer for everyone to come to a consensus, you know, to agree on something because if it's decentralized, everyone has to have an input on it. For example, on Hive, people will vote for witnesses to represent them. And then those people can try to enact different policies on the blockchain um, that is representational to the people who voted for them. So this makes a lot of sense, but you know, they could still do whatever they wanted. The great thing though, is that at any time people could take back their votes. So Again, there's a lot of different caveats to both of them, but the thing that is really important is that a lot of people will say things like, well, I'm not doing anything wrong. I don't need, you know, this kind of security. I, I won't, nothing bad is going to happen to me, little old me, but then you see the Twitter hack, right? It wasn't that anyone did anything wrong. And yet, um, just one person at Twitter, one single person was tricked and thus, uh, compromised all of these very high level accounts and it you know thank god all they wanted to do was a bitcoin scam they could have started a war for all we know twitter is very powerful so the whole idea of it being centralized and having a single point of failure should scare you it should scare you that someone could get your account and access it simply because um companies want more power and control and because of that you are the one who suffers you know some people might say yeah but it's better because then they can ban people that we don't like yeah but are you really suffering because someone you don't like is sharing the network with you no it's more of an inconvenience when you suffer is when you get banned for something uh frivolous because again people always think yeah but if it's my people who are in control, then we're good. But what about then when it happens when the people that you don't like are in control, then what? So it's more important to prepare for the worst than to have faith that the best is going to last, right? And that's, in my opinion, that's how I view decentralization. There's also many, many values that are great values that go along with the idea of centralization so or decentralization so for example with centralized platforms they typically uh infringe on your privacy they are not transparent with you um they can ban you they don't always they rarely support free speech today so there's a lot of things that are wrong with centralized platforms but they're very convenient and most people are using them so it's much easier to just continue using what what is working or you know what isn't necessarily failed yet then you look at decentralized platforms they're very new um they don't have as many features they're a little bit slower that turns a lot of people off they think oh well if i'm going to go to this new thing it should be amazing it's like well Again, there's caveats. You get all of these amazing benefits of privacy, uh, transparency. You have full control over all of your stuff. You can't be censored. You can't be banned. So many different things. I mean, heck, even just for the simple case of monetization on a lot of decentralized platforms, monetization is much more fair and allows anyone to get started and not be so discouraged with the ridiculous requirements and restrictions that centralized platforms have. As we've seen uh, in the past several years, platforms have become more like publishers that are centralized because they're starting to determine who and who can and can't speak and in a way they're not really just hosting everyone in this network they're determining which voices are allowed to be speaking which is more like a publisher like a magazine because they're deciding what you will read so this is very very important to understand the distinction because it also has legal applications and um and, and obviously legal like laws and everything applied to it so it makes a very big difference in how everyone is going to use these platforms and how the law will interpret um different things that happen on these platforms 
Again, centralization has more problems, but it is more convenient. And the, the problem and the scary thing for me is that people are choosing convenience over the solution because you know, doing something different, learning new things, all this stuff for something that you already feel isn't broken is a problem. And, um, sorry, let me just turn that off again. The whole thing here to be aware of is that if you are focusing on a centralized thing, it may be great now, but at some point in the future, you could just be completely wiped out. Even banks are centralized, right? Your bank account can be closed by your bank. And it's happened many times in the US. Um, PayPal has shut down many accounts because it's centralized. And if they decide, you know what, we're not going to support sex workers anymore, all of them are gone. And that's what happened. So there's many, many caveats. And again, you might say, oh, well, you know, I don't support sex workers. It's like, okay. But what always happens is the more fringe, you know, people get uh, excommunicated or whatever, and then they start to go for the slightly less fringe. And then eventually they're going for the regular people. And that's what we're seeing on YouTube. That's what we're seeing on a lot of social media platforms. That's what we're seeing in many different venues. I had a chat recently with Jack Wales and you can watch that. That's like about an hour long. And we're talking about all the different caveats and, um, you know, different blockchain social platforms and stuff that are centralized versus decentralized. Basically, for the most part, you can tell because most legacy platforms, so YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, um, they control everything that's going on and they harvest your data, they sell it, they make billions of dollars, you get nothing, right? And then you look at something that's more decentralized, like um, library, where you don't have any ads, they're not harvesting your information, you can give them the option to, but you can also just say no. And, um, and, and then you get all the benefits, even as a viewer on the platform, watching videos, you'll make money. So there's so many more benefits to these platforms, but yeah, they might have less moderation, more, um, you know, potentially fringe topics, but you can just not watch those. You can just only watch the things that you like. For me, it's very simple. Centralized platforms offer a more seamless experience at the cost of truth and monetization and privacy and all of these very important values. Whereas decentralization uh, puts more of the responsibility of all these things on you, but you get all of the benefits at the cost of convenience. So it really comes down to what is more important to you and then what, where are these platforms? Like, what are the solutions? Most people aren't aware of the problem, thus they don't see the need for a solution. But once you kind of, once you actually become aware, you're like, okay, well, what's out there? There isn't a lot out there. That's why I make videos doing reviews, breaking all these things down so that you can find what's out there. You can find all that stuff on my channel, but you know, real quick, just to name off a few different platforms. Not all these are decentralized, but they're infinitely more decentralized um, compared to legacy centralized platforms. So again, there is a spectrum. So whether it's a, a two or an eight, I would say most um, centralized platforms are like a one, one being the most centralized you can get. And then as you go down the spectrum, you'll have things like read.cash where it's a little decentralized, but it's still managed by one person, but they're not going to be like banning and all these different things um, in the same way. So one of the big problems is in a centralized platform, they might not apply all the rules fairly to everyone. Whereas in a decentralized platform, usually it's hard coded in. So it's not up to someone's judgment. It is completely fair and equal across all boundaries and, and, and restrictions and all that stuff. And that's very, very important. That's why people like the concept of Bitcoin. It is decentralized uh, money, basically, where you don't have to rely on someone to hold it. You don't have to pay them for it because I have to pay my bank if I don't have a certain amount of money in the bank. I don't have to pay anyone to store my Bitcoin on a wallet. 
and I have full control of the Bitcoin at any time, I could do whatever I want with it. If again, if the bank is closed and I can't get my money out, um, you know, it's closed today for Thanksgiving here in Canada, or, you know, my, my bank account got hacked on Friday or whatever. So then I couldn't access anything, including my investing and all that stuff. So that's pretty concerning. And how, how was it hackable? It was hackable because the bank did something wrong. It wasn't my fault. So with that being the case, it's like, obviously crypto is a very safe solution. And while the bank will, you know, make sure I get my money back, if the same thing happened to me with crypto, I might be screwed. But with crypto, it really is up to me. And I feel much more confident in my ability than just some random person. Why am I putting my my finances, my livelihood in their hands? Why would anyone? Because that's all they knew. That's all they know is out there. And Bitcoin and all that stuff is very new and confusing and maybe scary to some people. So you can learn about all these things way more in depth. If you go and check out my channel, check out all the other stuff. There's so many different platforms out there and we didn't even, you know, get into like decentralized finance and all these other in, like amazing, um, projects and I guess different caveats of decentralized, um, you know, finance, money, decentralized internet, decentralized anything. You you can decentralize anything by just taking the decisions out of the hands of a few people and allowing everyone to have some sort of input to that. Let me know what you guys think about this. So I think it's very important to understand the base concept of centralization and decentralization and, and how that applies to different things. My main focus is usually on decentralized social media platforms that also tend to use crypto and blockchain technologies. Um, but you know, there's a lot more than just that. And, um, you know, the world's your oyster. You can go and explore and check all that stuff out. I'm doing it every day and sharing my stuff with you. So if you want to keep following along, make sure to like, and subscribe and all that good stuff. Let me know in the comments, what's your favorite centralized platform? What's your favorite decentralized platform? Has this changed your mind? Has this opened your eyes? What do you think about Twitter and the Twitter hack not long ago? What do you think about censorship and how decentralization and centralization applies to these different things? Let me know all of your thoughts on all that good stuff in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. Thanks so much for watching this video to the very end. Since you did, it'd be awesome if you could give this video a like and comment hashtag number one ham in the comments below. Also, it'd be awesome if you could subscribe to this channel and follow me anywhere under at Scott C business, because I'm basically on every platform. You can find all the platforms that I am mainly using though at www.scottcbusiness.com. You can also find all my social links as well as my crypto addresses if you'd like to donate to me on Cointree at cointr.ee slash Scott C business. And you can also donate directly uh, by donating to scottcbusiness.crypto or scottcbusiness.eth with supporting wallets. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really appreciate your support. I'm Scott Cunningham, aka Scott C business signing off. Cheers.